what the, the, the thing that, that you all know is called is called the gotcha. Okay. Yes. The, the way you avoid the gotcha is by by saying, "Hey, uh, let, me, let me give you an example of a thing that, 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 that you could probably enjoy. It, it happened uh, during the um, Santa Barbara oil spill. Okay." My 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 leader in the Santa Barbara oil spill was not as, as versed in dealing with the press as, as I am. Okay, so uh, we we were we, we were studying Santa Barbara, and our, but our commission did not really say that we should do something about Santa Barbara. Okay, so some reporter calls up and says, you know, you guys are not interested in Santa Barbara. You're just interested in, in looking at us. And uh, looking at it as, as kind of as though as though we're guinea pigs, okay? And <laughs> True. My, my my leader said, no, 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 that's not what we're doing. He starts to explain it. The reporter keeps going on and 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 he keeps using this phrase, "You're just treating people from Santa Barbara as guinea pigs." And my guy said, no, no, no. And finally, kind of point, he, the, the, my 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 guy said, well, in that very limited sense, you might say the Santa Barbara's are uh, uh, are guinea pigs. You know what the headline in the newspaper is the next oh, day? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, Santa Barbara is a guinea pig, yeah. Well, guinea pigs. I can see that coming out of left field. Sure. Uh, I, 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 I have to explain to my, to my guy, when a reporter says to you, would you say that, my, my, my answer is always automatic. I would not use those words. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Yes, even, sir. Even though I would use those words, I wouldn't use those words because I, I, I don't, I don't see well, whether, whether there is it's the trap taking place. You see that? Yes, sir. So, I do. So I, I appreciate you calling, and and having said that, now uh, are there some things you want to ask me? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, far away. All right, sir. Now, relative to the Gulf. Yeah. Uh, you use tents and then piping on the tents in Santa Barbara, or you designed that system. Do you feel that's a viable solution in the Gulf, or is the depth making that not a viable solution? Well, the the answer is is that the answer is, is that there is a viable a viable solution which stems from that. Okay, but but it's it's not the same solution, and the reason not the same solution is because the behavior of the oil. Is different in Santa Barbara than it is in 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 in, 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 the, in the Gulf. And the, the big thing about the Gulf, which I've told you before, but people still don't really grasp it, is this triple point problem. Okay. The molecule combined, yes. And, and so you, and you don't have this in, in any, almost any other situation. The triple point. And what the triple point problem is as follows: is that you've got this oil down in this deep formation. All right. Okay. Yes, sir. And you think it's oil, but it's not oil. It's a mixture of, of different hydrocarbons of one sort or another. Okay, and and some of these hydrocarbons on the uh, in that atmospheric le level are, are, are appear as gas. Some of them appear as a, a liquid, and some of them appear as solid. Okay. Yes, sir. But down in that formation, those different hydrocarbons. Are all mixed together, and they all have the same density. Yes, sir. They all have the same density, so you can't tell from that that mass as to whether you're looking at a gas, or whether you're looking at a a, a liquid, or you're looking at a hydrocarbon. Are you, are you, can you see that? Yes, sir. I can. Okay. All right. Now, when you suddenly bring that that substance up from the from the deep ocean, and you bring it up into, into into a, a low atmosphere, uh, a lower, a lower atmosphere, way, well, well above the triple point condition. What happens to the stuff that was that was gas? Uh, is gas? Well, as you said, it explodes like opening a soda pop bottle. It, it explodes. Okay. And what, what happens to the stuff that was liquid? It turns into liquid. And what happens to the stuff that's solid? It turns into solid. Okay. And in the case of, and, and as a matter of fact, this is very similar to what happens in the, in the, in the fractionation tower. When you when you when you when you take your petroleum and you fractionate it and you get asphalt at the bottom and you get the octane at the top, pentane. You see that? Yes, sir. In other words, this is what, this is what you you do yourself with one of these towers. If you, if you if you take this substance that you got from from anywhere and you split it off into pentane and octane and, and butane and and methane and 
uh, hydrocarbon and carbon and carbon. Finally, uh, they had, uh, again, you got this terrible tarry asphalt. You see that? Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. But now you're in a situation in which nature is, do is doing this distillation process for you in a way that's, that you can't handle. Yes, sir. I understand. See, so, so, so therefore, you you got to do something different. Okay. Now, the next thing is that people say to me, "Well, okay, what do you? What would you do if this different?" And the answer goes as follows, and uh, is as follows. I'm not going to tell you. And you say, "Okay, tell me. Why are you going to tell me?" I said, the first place for for two reasons." And this goes back to my to when, when, we, when I was involved with the Polaris program. And, and when I was involved with the Polaris program, we had a lot of people who had prime responsibility for making, making decisions, okay? So there were guys we knew if they made a decision, something was going to happen as far as the design is concerned. We had a whole bunch of staff people who would come and advise us as to what to do, okay? And the staff people would give us all sorts of advice, one sort or another, and we'd appreciate all that advice. But then the staff people would be very upset when we wouldn't follow their advice. <laughs> and we said to them, hey, no, look, you're an advisor. You have no responsibility for, 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 for the advice that you give. We, we want to hear that advice, and the only thing you'll know about it is do we come back to you again for more advice, okay? Right. Uh, only to test of success. And when they finally understand, they understand it. So, but some guys that didn't understand it, and finally we, we, we produced a certificate called a certificate of no responsibility. I would fill out the guy's name and say, Joe Doe, Doe Dokes, okay? We want to certify is that you have no responsibility for the decision that's made with respect to the following item, okay? Understood. And, and I would do it, and they'd be furious. And I would say, we've got to do that. We've got to do that because you're going around and telling people that we have solutions and we're not carrying them out because... Uh, because you give nice advice with these solutions, you not carry them out. So if I, at this point, tell you what I would recommend as a solution, I will, I'll, I'll only tell that to somebody who really has responsibility for the solution. In other words, if someone from BP called me up, who's the designer of the next fix, okay? Right. And said, hey, Craven, I want your advice as to what we ought to do for the next fix. Hey, I'll give them all that advice, okay? If someone calls me up and says, we want to hear your advice, the next fix, and I'll say, well, uh, are you, uh, you, you have a responsible job in this whole thing, you see? Uh, now, reporters have a responsible job, but it's, it's not the same responsible job. It's a different responsible job. The reporter's job is to come up and, and, and tell, tell, tell the truth and do, to do things. And one thing the, the reporters, the, the modern press doesn't do anymore the modern press will always give you two sides of an argument, okay? And no, when they know that one side of the argument is bad, they haven't got the guts to come up and, and announce that the other, that, that now for, for example, on, on this whole thing, there's this talk about using an atom bomb, okay? All right? Okay. Yes, sir, uh, I, I've heard that talk. Yeah, yeah, I've heard that talk. That talk's ridiculous. It is stupid. It is, it is, it is counterproductive. It is, uh, and, 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 the, and the reporter knows it. And so when, when the reporter notices it, why does the reporter say the stupid idea was proposed? You see? They, they, they can say that, okay? They should say that. But no, that, that uh, idea of, of using an atom bomb keeps floating, it's, it's still floating around, isn't it? It's still, still floating around on, on this, uh, on this Gulf thing, okay? And, uh, they say, well, it was used successfully somewhere. It was used successfully, was used successfully on a, on a land-based project. Right. Okay? <clears throat> I mean, have you any idea of what happens when an atom bomb that's exploded underwater? Well, hydrostatic shock being transmitted for vast distances, and in that case, that oil deposit... <laughs> Boy, you, you just fall into the trap. I did. That hydrostatic shock was... There's no hydrostatic shock from an atom bomb. There's not. No, 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 no. The, the, the shock is diffused. It's diffused, okay? And, and so the, the pressure of an atom bomb is just like, the, just like increasing the depth of water up to 5,000 feet and then down from 5,000 feet, and there's no shock. And the reason is because, because the water 
changes the nature of the of the of, of